In this lecture, we will solve problem number 3 and like previous two problems, we will try to find out if the given signal is energy signal, power signal or any NP signal. Here signal is XT and it is equal to 2 rect T by 2 and to solve this problem, you need the knowledge of rectangular signals. Here RECT is the notation used for rectangular signals. I have already explained rectangular signals in great detail. If you are following the playlist, you will find the lecture after few lectures. I will give a small introduction about the rectangular signals in this lecture also. And using that introduction, we will find out the solution of this question. So let's discuss what is unit rectangular signal first. A unit rectangular signal is signal having the total area equal to unity. And when you draw the waveform of unit rectangular signal, you will find it is like this and as you can see we have a rectangle we are calling it unit rectangular signal and the signal is having non-zero value between minus a by 2 to a by 2 and I am talking about a general case where a is any real number and the amplitude of the signal or the non-zero value of the signal is 1 by a and we represent this signal by r e c t t where t is the time. We also have other rectangular signals but in other rectangular signals it is not important that the total area is equal to 1 but here in this case if you calculate the total area it is equal to height into width. Height is 1 by a and if you calculate the width you will find it is equal to a. So the total area is equal to 1 and thus this is unit rectangular signal. Now let's talk about the rectangular signals in general. The rectangular signals have a notation a rect t over tau and in this a is the amplitude a is the amplitude and this tau is the duration is the duration for which the signal amplitude is not equal to zero or it is equal to a now if you compare this standard notation with this you will find here the amplitude is equal to 2, amplitude is equal to 2 and tau, the duration for which signal amplitude is 2 is also equal to 2. Now we have two different methods to find out the answer of this question. Method number 1 and method number 2. We have already seen the two methods in the last two lectures. In method number 1, we first try to obtain the waveform of the signal and by looking at the waveform, we try to find the nature of the signal. In method number 2, we first try to find out the average power of the signal and by the value of average power, we can comment on the nature of the signal. Now if you see this signal closely, you will find it is going to be a rectangular signal which we have already seen and rectangular signal is finite duration signal. So this signal here is a finite duration signal when signal is finite duration signal there are two possibilities it can be any NP signal or it can be energy signal it will be any NP signal if at any instance of time the amplitude of the signal reaches to infinity but as you can clearly see in case of rectangular signals the amplitude is not equal to infinite at any instance of time therefore it is not any NP signal and thus it is energy signal so there is no need to plot the waveform of 2 rect t by 2 if you are following method number 1. You can directly write signal xt is an energy signal. So you can clearly see if you know the properties you can easily solve the question. You can avoid unnecessary calculations and you will have your answer within seconds. Now we will move on to method number 2. In method number 2 we will calculate the average power p. And as the signal is non-periodic signal, we will use the formula for non-periodic signals which is limit t tends to infinity 1 over t integration minus t by 2 to t by 2 mod xt square dt. And when you follow the method number 2, you will need the waveform of signal xt. So let's quickly plot the waveform of signal xt. It is very easy. You can see the duration for which the signal amplitude is non-zero is 2. This means from minus 1 
to 1 signal value will be non-zero and the amplitude is 2 so this means the non-zero value is going to be 2 and if you calculate the total area in this case you will find it is not equal to unity so this particular rectangular signal is not unit rectangular signal signal xt if you calculate the total area it is height into width height is going to be 2 and width if you find it will also be equal to 2 so the area is equal to 4 therefore this is not unit rectangular signal but it is simple rectangular signal now we can calculate the average power and for the calculation of average power we first need we first need to set minus t by 2 and t by 2 so let's quickly decide where we have our minus t by 2 and t by 2 if you remember the average value calculation lecture I told you to choose minus t by 2 and t by 2 such that we have all the amplitude transitions here if you see we are having two different amplitude transitions from 0 to 2 and from 2 to 0 so we will choose minus t by 2 here and automatically t by 2 will be here they are equidistant from the origin and in this range all the amplitude transitions are involved now we can easily perform the integration and calculate our average power limit t tends to infinity 1 by t inside the bracket when you perform the integration from minus t by 2 to minus 1 minus t by 2 to minus 1 signal value is equal to 0 so 0 square dt plus when you integrate from minus 1 to 1 from minus 1 to 1 you will find signal value is 2 and mod 2 square is 4 so 4 dt plus now we will integrate from 1 to t by 2 1 to t by 2 again signal value is 0 so 0 square dt or simply 0 dt now in the next step we will perform the integration this part will remain the same we'll limit t tends to infinity 1 by t inside the bracket integration of 0 is 0 so we have 0 integration of 4 will give us 4t 4t lower limit is minus 1 upper limit is plus 1 plus integration of 0 is 0 now we can easily simplify this limit t tends to infinity 1 by t and when you put the upper and lower limits you will find you have 4 multiplied by 2 so finally we have 8 by t and now we will put the limit 8 by t when you put t tends to infinity here you will find the average power p is equal to 0 and when average power p is equal to 0 this means signal is going to be energy signal because when average power p is 0 this implies the total energy is some finite value and when total energy is finite the signal is energy signal so you can see from method number one we got energy signal as our answer and from method number two also we got energy signal as the answer so you can follow both the methods it depends upon the situation for example when you have to choose one option out of four you can follow method number one it will save you some time and when you have to write down your solution in conventional way then you may choose method number two it is good for your university examinations and it is also good for some conventional competitive examinations so this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.